And Kaylee is going to, and I know that I'll be monitoring the chat. So if you are still having audio issues, we'll just we'll work on it through the chat so that yes. parents yes. can go through this content because it's super important and there's a lot to it. It is super important and we have a lot to cover. So yes, I, I know you're not trying to join now. Um, I mean, you're asking if you should join now. The price form is in the course and we're going to close that price form by the end of this by before this live is over. So you won't be able to get that. Um, the resources and everything you need will be in here. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So my name is Karen Goebel. I'm a program coordinator with digital learning and Kaylee Wehmeyer is also joining me tonight and we've got Cindy Butler. Uh, she's not uh, she didn't know she was helping but maybe she can help out if Kaylee gets overwhelmed in the chat because <laughs> we've got so many people and um, anyway um, but let's get started because this has been a big change and we've had a lot of people um, emailing us and noticing this change and you do have instructional spe or not instructional specialists digital specialists at all of your intermediates and your high schools that are there three or four days a week you also have some instructional specialists or ugh, I keep saying that digital instructional specialists that service the elementaries that can help you as well and we're going to be sharing this webinar out with everyone but let's go ahead and get started so first of all when you signed in this year you noticed there was a new look there you see some icons up here at the top it is all changed we're not going to spend a lot of time with this because it's really not a lot but in that first folder where it says new look i'm clicking there it goes we do have a picture in here that kind of shows you the changes you know what y'all i don't like the new yellow folder that to me is brown um, we did voice our opinions the other day in a Schoology um, webinar that they were having. So they are aware, they've heard it from a lot of people that some of these colors um, may not be the, the prettiest. They said they based it on accessibility for, you know, all learners, but I don't know. I, I think they missed the mark on some of these, but they are looking at it. But we did post these in here. So if you can't remember, you can always go in here to see what the new icon like the discussion board used to be you know two little speech bubbles that were blue and yellow and now it's just looks like two speech bubbles that are the same color but anyway uh, you can see there the difference um, the new uh, icons okay um thank you cindy but what we're really wanting to concentrate on tonight is the new way to do Google Drive assignments. And part of the reason I really wanted you all to join the course, so hopefully some of you, well, we know there's about 16, 17 of you all in this course. I'm going to go ahead and go in here. Here you see the new icon. I want to show you there's three different um, samples here or assignments that I have made. Uh, the very first one is our standard what we think about when we think about Google Drive assignments we typically think about it just being for Google Drive files um, and I don't want you to leave this webinar with the idea that this is that they're only for Google Drive assignments because we're going to show you and talk about how you can use this for any kind of assignment and after I've started playing with this, my feeling is I would do everything as a Google Drive assignment. I don't know that I would do, there might be a few things that I would do the, with the regular Schoology assignments, but I'm going to show you how you can do the exact same thing here uh, that, you, that you can do in a Schoology assignment. This very first one, if y'all will go ahead and click on it, those of you that are in here, you're going to see that this is what I'm showing you the teacher view and you will be seeing yours. Now you might have to um, toggle back and forth. You see how I have multiple tabs up here. Okay, so you might need to. I've got a little button there in my way. Um, you might have to toggle between your Schoology course and the teams or however you've got it going. But um, yeah, all right. So I can see right now I've got several people that are in here. 
I've had a question come up. We had I had this come up today actually with someone who was trying to monitor what a kid was doing or a student was doing in their Schoology Google Drive assignments and they were trying to go up to course options and view the course as the student. No, you don't want to do that. That is not the way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and click on Thomas right here. So you're going to see that it opens this up and if Thomas was in here, which I'm not sure if he is or not, but if he were in here and moving some of these things around, see I'm moving his around, but because we both, I have access to his as well, um, but he can be in here. This is how you monitor and see what the kids are doing as they're working on their assignment. So all you do is you, um, and I'm trying to move this bar out of my way and it's like, it's in my way up here. Okay, stop. Let me do one little thing here. Sorry, I'm going to move teams bar that no one else can see but you. I can only see it and it's it's yes. right. So I had to move this down just a little bit. OK, so here I am. So now I could flip through and look at the different people who have submitted. OK, but I can also be over here grading if I want to if I'm ready to give a grade and that sort of thing. All right, I'm going to exit. So watch me. I'm up here in this top corner. I'm going to back out of it. Oh, do you see how uh, there's Thomas right there? So Thomas, can, if you can move that you're around, see how I'm watching him. He is in this and I could see him if he's typing. Hi, Thomas. He typed. So I could even leave comments to the kids. I could uh, give them feedback while I'm in here as well. So I'm going to back out of Thomas is there and that. So you can see I can see everyone that's in here and look at their different assignments and this is how we go in now to grade it and everything so I'm going to now go where am I going I want out of here why is it not cooperating with me let me move this up I'm kind of like in the assignment how did oh let me go I don't think that's how I'm supposed to go back out why am I like stuck in it, girls? Well, there's the assignment. Y'all see my bar and how I can get close this? I don't want to manage don't people. I don't see my bar either. I'm going to X out. I don't know what just happened. I'm going to go into it back like this. I don't know what. You know, it's always something. I'm going to go back in here. So that was an example. So this one that I just did was an example of me doing a typical Google Drive assignment that we think about in the past where I gave you an, a file. It gave every student their own copy so that they could. Um, um, I'm going to make that a little bigger for right now. All right, so it made everyone their own copy. Um, it's kind of like what we used to think about with Google Classroom long ago. Okay. All right. Karen, I want to just quickly say. You go right ahead. What you're seeing from Karen's perspective is the teacher view. This is what mm -hmm. you're going to see as a teacher. What you all are seeing right now, if you have joined the course, that is from the student perspective. You all are students in Karen's course. And so we really wanted you to see the student side so that you know what your students are going to see and you are able to speak to that. Right, so very good question. This is right. You are looking at, you're seeing two views. Kaylee is correct. My screen is showing what the teacher and we're going to, I'm going to show you exactly how I set all this up in just a minute. Goodness, sorry, a dog just went a little nut. So Bella, stop. Okay, so now it's not a webinar show, without Karen's dog. It is never a webinar without my dogs going crazy. Now here is one of the best well, maybe not the best because a lot of this is really good. But one of the things that I think you all are going to absolutely love is that now with this new Schoology um, Google Drive integration, you have the ability to turn on a plagiarism checker. All right, so I'm going to open this assignment. OK, so I'm in here. Now, here's what I'm. Oh, look, somebody's clapping over there. Um, what I want you all to do, I've got a few people in here. I'm actually going to tell you all to 
cheat. I want you to open, and I did this without making an attachment on here, but I did turn on the plagiarism checker. So when I open, oh, no file attached. So, whoops, let me close that out. Um, what I want you to do is when you open this assignment, I want you to hit the create button and bring in a Google Doc. I probably should have put this in with an attachment, but oh well, I didn't do that. So let me go to another Schoology. I'm going to duplicate this screen and just show you what I'm talking about. If I can get to this one right here. So when you um, when you um, with the attachment without an attachment, what's cool about this is I can let the kids choose. Do they want to do a spreadsheet? Do they want to do a Google Doc? Do they want to do a slideshow? Okay, so when you get in there and you click on, um, let me just view the course as somebody. I'm going to do it as Kim Burkett here. All right, so I'm going to go to now this one. All right, so watch what I'm going to do. I want you when you open the, oh, she's already submitted something. So it, what, that didn't work. But what I wanted you to do was there's a create button and it's got a little drop down. I want you to pick um, a doc or something. Okay. All right. So now let me get back in. Am I in the right one? Yes, I'm in the right one. So, oh, I see Keith Allen has, he's got two attachments here. And I hope you plagiarized. Okay. So, oh no, he's not done anything in here. So, Keith, if you're still on there, uh, let's see. I mean, let me go to this doc or this doc. What I want you to do is go and copy something from the web. So, just do a search somewhere. And, oh, there he goes. Hold on, I'm going to come back in and come back out. So, do you see here that it, it's showing me over here? Now, it says no flagged passages. Hmm. I'm not sure why it's saying that. Did you plagiarize that? I know he did. And he's already submitted that. Did you use did you, AI? He wrote it down at the oh, bottom that he used AI. Yeah. Okay. So that's not going to. Okay. So I have a feeling AI is not. <laughs> we, we're still playing with this, but I think it really has to be off of a website for it to get it. Mm -hmm. And we do have AI blocked, well, for the most part, for kids. So somebody said they copied from, a, oh, look, okay. So do y'all see my screen? Oh, I'm in the wrong course. Let me go back to the course y'all are in. How about that? Let me, I'm gonna hit refresh. What? Boy, oh boy, this is just wonderful. All right, let me go back into the course and I'm gonna go back into that. I think it's me going to too many different courses here. I've got several open. All right, it was this one, right? All right, so I'm going to come down, and I wanted y'all to see right here. Here we go. This person right here, Nadia. Is that how you say it, Nadia? She has five flagged passages. And right here, Kendall has two flagged passages. Anna has uh, one flagged passage. So if I click on this, here she has cheetahs are the fastest animal in the world. And then look over here on the side where it says one flagged passage. Here we're, um, hold on. There we go. I'm going to click it. And when it opened it up, look right here. It says web matches one. And it tells me she got it from discoverwildlife.com. That's right, just plagiarism checker, not an AI checker. That's right, it is not an AI checker. Um, yes, but look at that. It's actually given me exactly where she found this passage. Now guys, with every, um, with every um, filter program that we use, it is not going to be a hundred percent accurate all the time. Um, 
it's they're they're doing the best they can, but you know what? Sometimes it's just not going to catch a hundred percent of everything. But it's a good start, and it does give you more than what you had before with uh, the Google Drive assignments. So you see here, we've got some flagged passages, and then I could then go and um, send it back and unsubmit it because once they submit it I'm going to click on Paula see up here where it says return I could leave them a note and say uh, sorry you um, you didn't do this and so I could hit the little return button and I'm going to return this and it's going to return it to the student so that they can um, try again if I want to give them that opportunity. So see now it shows you that it's still assigned to her. It's no longer in that submitted, uh, but it does tell me who I've got seven submitted and one returned. Look, it did it to me again where, um, <laughs> oh boy. Am I in this thing? Oh, wait, I'm going to get out of there. OK, so here we go. Here are all my so it does look like and that's another thing I just I forgot about when you do open one up, it does pop it to another tab, which is what I was probably stuck on earlier. OK, the last one I kind of want to show you Y'all help me with time, Kaylee. She's my going to be my time keeper. All right, so that one was with the plagiarism checker. Now this last one is one that I did just to, to throw it out there. We don't even have to open it up if we don't want to. But what I did on this one was um, I put in blank slides. So let's say that, especially if I'm in elementary and maybe we're studying um, the states of matter. And so I assign each kid, OK, you're, I want this table here or this group of children. I'm going to tell them to, to do solids. And then I want another person to work on gas and I want another one to work on liquid. And so I might give them those things and then let them cre create and make their own. But I gave them a PowerPoint because I, I did want that to be a PowerPoint. But the other thing I could do is put it in there like I did that second one with no attachment whatsoever. And let me go back out. Oops, I went too far. I really wanted to stay in this folder. This second one to me is gold because now I can let the kids, because we hear so much about personalized learning and how we need to let kids have more ownership of their learning. So without me attaching anything, I can let them decide, do you want to do this in a Google drawing? Do you want to do this in a slideshow? Do you want to just, um, maybe you wanted to go to Adobe Express and create a video that you have downloaded and now let them upload that up into this uh, because they can attach things that are on their computer. All right. So maybe this is your way to give them the freedom to be able to create the way they want to do it. Um, I actually like this way better than just doing what we typically think of with a Schoology uh, assignment that was not really attached with Google Drive or anything like that. Um, and the pros for this to me um, is the fact that it does let them have the choice, but then it's still, I can turn on that plagiarism checker. Uh, the other thing that we started to have issues with, I know a lot of you that have been in um, last spring, um, it wasn't Schoology that made the changes, but Google made some changes in their security and the way things were shared and the way things talked to each other. And when that happened, Schoology had to make some changes in that integration. Well, what we noticed was happening with the Google Drive assignment piece or even with the other one, is if the kids shared with you a Google file, they had to also go to their Google Drive and not only did they do it in Schoology, but then they had to go to their Google Drive, 
and share the file manually in there by typing in the teacher's name and finding that teacher and then sharing the file with them or the teacher could not see it. So this new integration alleviates that. You will not have those issues that we had in the spring when Google changed um, the way things were shared. Does that make sense? Click on, oh, you're talking, okay. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat um, so that Kaylee and, um, and I think Cindy's helping her as well. Thank you so much, uh, are monitoring that. So that's the Google assignment piece. Okay, we've got about 20 more minutes. All right, the next thing I want to show you now is I'm actually going to go, I want to go to, I made a new course because now I want to show you how did I do all this? How do we make these fantastic new assignments? So when you go to add materials, you are no longer going to go to add assignment. I'm going to go ahead and click on it just to show you the old way you used to see Google Drive file assignments here. That's not how you're going to go. So from now on, and truthfully, I'm, I'm telling you, I personally would probably rarely use this one now. I will probably do everything this way. So over here on, when I click add materials, you see I have two sides. I have a right side and then this left side. On the right side are what we call our external tools that we have integrated into Schoology. Um, we have Edpuzzle there, we have Kami. This is where you also go. Don't do a Kami assignment this way either. You always want to go over here to use this integration. But right here is the new way to do Google assignments. So I'm going to click there. Now, I have to now tell Schoology that I want to connect this with my account. So you do want to make sure that you are, yeah, we're going to talk about the categories. Um, we're going to make sure you're in the correct account. You want to be in your school account and you're going to say link. Now, because I made this course brand new so y'all could see exactly what you're going to see. The very first time you go into a course, you have to do the link two times. You have to do that first one I just did, and then you also have to do this one. So I'm going to say link. Now remember, you only do this one time, and so this is one you'll do at the beginning of the year. You'll do it twice. The rest of the time, you'll only click on it once. But I'm going to say link. And now it is linking. While it's doing that, I'm going to take a drink. All right. Now, here's where you decide if you want a due date. Now, one thing we have noticed with a due date, if you have to change that due date in the practices that we have done, and hopefully this is maybe a glitch and it might correct itself, but what we've noticed so far is let's say I'm, I decide I'm going to make the due date for this Friday. And then all of a sudden Friday gets here and I realize my kids didn't get enough time to work on that. And I change the due date to Tuesday of next week. What we have seen in the few practices that I have done is that if a kid submits it on Monday and then they decide, oh, I really need to fix something, they can't unsubmit. Because if you put a due date, anytime you have a due date on an assignment, typically they can unsubmit until the due date passes. But what we have noticed is that if you do have to change that due date, they can still submit. It's the unsubmit part that they can't do if you change the due date. As long as you don't change the due date, they can unsubmit if they need to. All right. The other thing we've noticed is it bugs me that when you click in here, it doesn't automatically select that. So I'm going to just type practice there. I'm going to put practice one. You can then put a title. You put your instructions. You decide if you want a rubric or not there. Here's where you decide if you want to turn on the plagiarism checker. And what is cool about the plagiarism checker? The other thing is that it also 
lets the kid run the plagiarism checker before they submit. Now, if they choose not to, it does give them a notice. It says, oops, you're about to submit this without running. So it does give them a chance to try to be honest because it will ask them if they want to check to see if they're plagiarizing. Um, and if they choose not to, it's still going to catch them. OK, here's where you decide if you decide you want to attach something, you click here and then you pick the file that you want from your drive. If you choose this one over here, it's going to give uh, a copy to each of the students in your classroom to edit and submit. You can also click on create right here and give them a blank drawing or a, a blank slideshow or a spreadsheet or whatever. Or you don't have to click any of these buttons. You can attach nothing to it. And what's cool about that is it lets them, it, they still get this create button. And even if you attach a file, like I did that Tangram thing earlier, the kids still get the option to, to attach multiple things. Like maybe they like that Tangram and they went off on their own and they went into Google Drawing and they made a drawing and wrote a story about their figure or thing that they created. I used to read in first grade a, a story about a Tangram that became all these different things and maybe they wrote a story about it and they also wanted to attach that. They could still do that along with the original that you gave them. But then once you decide what you want here, you're going to say create. Now I noticed in the chat um, that somebody said, well, how do I set the grading um, categories? So after I have made my assignment, which I did right here, you're going to notice that I'm going to go back to the gear and I'm going to click edit. This is exactly like what you have to do if you do an Ed puzzle. Um, and anytime you're using like those external tools and things. So you see here, it shows me the grading category. Right now it's on ungraded because I made the, I don't have grading categories for you all. You should have already, especially if you're grades three uh, through 12, you would probably already have your grading category set up when you connected it to Skyward. So you would probably have a major minor. Sometimes I like to make a brand new category that just says um, graded because maybe it's something that I don't want to actually put into Skyward, but I do want to give some accountability to it and I want them to turn it in and that sort of thing. So I might make my own category there. Just remember, if you create your own category besides major or minor, it will not talk to Skyward. So then I set this up. I can come down here. I could, if I decided I didn't want it linked to my other sections, I could remove them. I'm going to say save changes. Now, one other thing that I want to show you that now that school has started, we have discovered, because like I said, this was all brand new. When we practiced this summer, when we first got it, we didn't have um, students involved. We didn't have linked courses and all that. I'm going to open this up because what you have to do if you have linked your courses. So do you see up here at the top? I know these are linked because I see two courses listed right here. So what I have to do, the very first assignment that I do put into here, I have to open it up and then look right up here at the top, right here. Do you see right there where it says Schoology Google Drive and there's a little drop down. If I click that, I have to now go to my other linked course and watch what it's going to ask me. Because if I don't do this, the kids in those other sections will not have access to this. So I do have to physically link and think of it this way. When you go to Skyward and you link, so you have to do each section. Same thing with this. You have to go to each linked section and you have to say link. And then once I do that, I'll show you when I, I'm going to add a second assignment once it finishes here. 
had that problem already. Yep, we just discovered it. Like I said, when we turned this on, we didn't have it. So now look, I can switch back and forth now between my assignments. Now watch what happens if I make a new assignment. I'm just going to make one real fast. I'll just put gibberish on here. All right, I'm just going to, okay, let's say create. When I go in to this assignment, and I switch. See, it'll show me this one and watch when I go to this one. It'll it'll go. So I didn't have to link it again the second time. It's kind of like think about this at the Skyward with the beginning of the year. You always have to remember to to link all your courses to Skyward. So it talks same thing with that. You'll just have to toggle between the two right there. Yeah, all right. So any questions, or how are we doing on the chat? Anything you need to say, Kaylee? Have you noticed or said anything that I haven't addressed? Yes, yeah, so somebody did ask about um, the rubric. Oh, the rubric, okay. Yes, do you wanna go over that just real quickly? Yep, 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 yep. Let me make a new one here. I'm just gonna go in and make a new one. Rubrics are real easy. I, Kaylee and I love rubrics. Um, I tell you what, if you're not using rubrics, you're missing out. It will, it's a game changer. It makes your life 100% easier. Um, so I'm going to say add a rubric. And if, now it's not going to go find rubrics from your old courses with the old Google Drive assignment. But once you start developing them in here, it will allow you to reuse them. I don't have any to reuse right now, but I'm gonna say create. And when it comes up, it's real easy. I just add a title, I add a description, and then you just can change the points here. Guys, don't get fooled by the points because even if I put five points here and they miss one, they're not gonna get a four in the grade book. Anybody know what they're going to get? They're going to get an 80. <laughs> right? And I do math. My sister can check me. Lisa, am I right? She might not. She might be ignoring me. Um, so, um, <laughs> but it will automatically convert that to the numeric grade for you. Just because you don't, you don't have to make your points. I, I tell you all, I had, We've we've been all over this district and I have seen people that are like, yeah, but I've got to get this rubric to add up to 100. Mm, no, you really don't. You don't have to do that. It's all mathematics and it will um, it'll figure all that out for you. OK, so then once you get that, so you might put this at five points and then um, did I give it a title? It probably won't let me save it without a title and I say save. So now when the students um, do this, and I don't have anybody in this course to do it, but if I had an assignment here and then I, I could just easily click on the little rubric once I opened it. Did I attach a rubric in this other one? Do you know, Kaylee? You know what? I'll do that real quick. Do I have enough time? Hey, 20. Do I have enough time? Which one does it? Uh, Let's see. You've got like nine minutes. Nine minutes. I got to talk fast. I was going to say I could. Oh, I do have a rubric on this, don't I? Let's see who submitted. Do I have a rubric? I do. Look, yeah. I, I'm smarter than I think. OK, so I'm going to pop this out and I'm going to give them. Where is it? Eek. My five points. Where's my point? Why am I not letting it? Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, there we go. Five. Nope. How come I can't get the five in there, Kaylee? What am I doing wrong? Sure. What? What am I doing? Did it take that five? Oh, wait. I got to put it here. I, I, I just pop it out to look at it. Okay. We're still learning with y'all. All right. So there, I gave it a five. So do you see what it did there? And if I go to the grade book, I'm going to show you all how it puts in a 100 maybe. If I can get to the grade book, which one is my grade book? Over here. So I go to the grade book. What was that person's name? Keith. Do I have him in here? Keith Allen. 
Keith Allen, why is it not showing? What did I do? Oh, you know why? Oh. Because, okay. You don't have it grading. I don't have it as graded. Because remember what I told y'all earlier? Everything goes in as ungraded. Oh, I, maybe I didn't mention this. So it's a good thing it happened right now. When you put it in, and I didn't go change any of these to, un, to graded. So let me go change that right now to graded. I got to create a category here so I can make it graded. All right, now it will be in the grade book. That was the problem. So you do have to, well, it made a liar out of me. I'm not sure what in the heck now. What is going on, folks? Did I hit save? Maybe I didn't close it out. I promise y'all it works. It's just being funny tonight. Maybe I didn't hit save. I don't know. Oh, maybe I didn't. Nope, I did. Did I hit save changes down here earlier? I don't know. I was typing in the chat. <laughs> okay. Well, we can go back, but it does work. It does work. Okay. So what questions? Okay. Um, let me see what all I have not covered while we're talking about that. Any other questions? All right. Be aware that, okay, we talked about the linked. We talked about uh, editing the grading categories. Now, the last thing I want to do, and then I've got to get this. Um, uh, I have your wheel of names pulled up, by the way. Oh, then I'll have to let you share, okay. right? Correct. Right. So if <laughs> okay. you have not Perfect. filled out the prize form, fill it out because I'm going to lock go it. right now. She's about to lock this prize form. It's right here at the, the front right here. So make sure you click on that. We are giving away five prizes while she's getting that ready. The last thing I do want to talk about real fast is the Google Drive resource app. This is the change that went through um, in March or April of the spring. We have a video on it and we have written instructions. I've heard some people say that they have to go. I, I hope you all notice I did not. When you go and add something in to your. Um, to those assignments, you do not have to add it to Schoology first. The only time you need to add something. See like this is a, is. Um, well, that's not a good example because this is a video. But if I had embedded a slideshow or when I love to do pages in Schoology and I like to embed slideshows on there so the kids have access to the materials, that's when you're going to want to come to resources. But truthfully, most of the time you're going to do it this way. So let's say that I am, I'm going to add a page. So here I am, I'm adding a page. Most people don't go to resources first and then add it. They add it when they're in here. So I'm going to go up here to insert content and the Google Drive file app. Just know that new change that happened in April, you have to add it here before you can embed it on a page. I, we like to do this a lot in discussion boards. I like to put a slideshow up at the top of a discussion board uh, inside there. And so if I wanted to do that, I would have to have it listed here. So then to do that, you have to go to add, uh, add resources, add files from your Google Drive. And let me see if I can find one that I haven't added yet. Um, you do not have to do this ahead of time before you add um something to your um assignments okay you only have to do this for um well i'd have to think of something that i know let's see uh let me see seesaw let's see if i've done anything lately with seesaw i think i have nope i haven't so i can grab this if i want to embed this i select it and then I add it and it's going to show up over here. There it is down here. It's it's going to embed them in there and then I could set uh, put that on to. Um, I could embed it on this page right here if I wanted to. 
Okay. Yes, Does that make a great example for this would be if you had a Schoology discussion board and you embedded maybe like a choice board yes. on top of that discussion board. Because we, ma we make a choice boards in uh, Google Drawings all the time, but we also do it on a Google Slide. So if you have that choice board on there, you could embed it at the top of that discussion board, but you'd have to add it first. So remember, to do this, like when I added that Tangram, I did not have to go to resources and add it to Schoology first. You don't have to do any of that. You only have to do that when you're adding something from your drive that you want to embed on a page or in a discussion board uh, or somewhere else. Does that make sense? The other thing I want to show you, because we have three minutes and then we'll be done. Down here at the bottom under resources, I have a video on how to do those Google Drive assignments that you saw. We also have one that shows how the kids submit, so you can watch that one as well. And we have written instructions right up here at the top. Make sure you scroll and look at all the instructions because at the bottom we have added about how you have to toggle and link those other um, sections. That's if you have linked sections. Some people are self-contained and they may not link, but I know in the intermediate and high school and a lot of the fourth and fifth grade, they are they link their courses together. And the other thing we put in here was to re a reminder that all of the assignments come in ungraded and then you have to click on that gear and change it to major or minor or you can leave it ungraded if you want. I know somebody who was emailing me about this. We were talking about she was using for data trackers and she wanted to submit a data tracker and then the kids are going to work on this assignment all year long by adding their data to this data tracker and then she doesn't have it graded because it's not ever going to go in the grade book but she can go in and click on each kid's names and watch and see their data tracker and the information that they're putting on their data tracker. So that's a cool way to do a Google file assignment is as a data tracker. Can you embed a slideshow and only have one slide available to see? If you hide those other slides, Kaylee, it should hide them except sometimes when they scroll, they still see the hidden slides. Typically, mm -hmm. when I do that, I I just put I use if I only want them to see one slide, then I'm only gonna do a one slide slideshow. Typically, is what I'm gonna do. But is there a reason you want to not let them see the others? Because a lot of times, if I have other slides, I might make a copy of that slide and make a copy of that slide only to embed as the choice board. 